I've always thought that there are alternate life forms like right here on Earth. <laughs> and you know, many of the you know, kind of basic body plans of, of plants and animals diverge you know, so long ago that it, it's almost as if they evolved on a different planet. You know, sort of the small critters in the world are actually not simple. I mean, they may be small and they may live um, different kinds of lives, but simple is just a, a really inappropriate term. My research focuses basically on how flies fly. I think anybody who has watched, you know, animals in nature, birds migrating across the Atlantic, or you know, butterflies making it from Canada to Mexico, or a fly, you know, circling the garbage can and evading the fly swatter, you know, that's what we want to understand. We want to understand how how these animals can do these amazing behaviors. So it's, it's really sort of walking the behavior from, you know, what you'd see, you know, outdoors in a natural environment and sort of studying it under more and more and more and more restrictive ways. You can't go to sort of a standard scientific catalog and say, you know, I want to buy a flight simulator for a fly or I want to buy a giant robotic robotic fly or, you know, I want a little micro manipulator that allows me to, to, to put little wires in fly muscles. We, we often have to spend a lot of time developing our own instruments and techniques. We do high-speed video of freely flying flies. We do sort of virtual reality of tethered flies. We do electrophysiology in tethered flying flies. We do brain imaging of flies that are flying, again, using genetic techniques. We have a giant robotic fly in which we can study the, the generation of aerodynamic forces um, we have a sky simulator to see how flies can navigate over long distances. We also build these little tiny robotic flies, and that's how we study social interactions. Um, and as I said, it just kind of goes on and on as we sort of think of new, new questions and try to brainstorm over ways to approach them. I think seeing these high-speed sequences makes you think you know, more about the animal as a cohesive whole. Neuroscientists tend to be sort of not only brain focused, but sensory focused. I mean, focused on how information comes into the brain. Um, but I think what the core function of, of a brain is to sort of take that sensory information and do something with it. And so it's sort of where the rubber hits the road, where the sensory information turns into a motor action that I think is, you know, one of the most interesting questions in neuroscience.